Hello! Last week I've shown you how to better use T's more dynamically, um, use them inside your styles and tube and pipe. And today I'm going to show you um, a different way of doing branches because, as you know, I've, I've already shown a couple of ways of doing branches and we're going to review those. Um, and I'll show you a different one which I think is a better, better way of doing it. Um, so this is really a continuation from last week. I'm going to use the same files. I've created my root and now I just need to create a branch. As you know, branches are not allowed. So even if I want to select a node and try and start a root, it doesn't allow me. Um, so you can do that by just starting a root and either choose one of the open ends or any other geometry that you have, like uh, center points, anything really. We take off all the dimension. Um, so what I like to do is just go in one direction a couple of times and then read, delete um, every other segment. Why every other segment? Because um, <laughs> there's still a collinear constraint in between them, so this will just make them um, free. So, let me just show my planes. I'm going to do this perpendicular here. Uh, so, I'm going to put a dimension just so that it doesn't extend beyond our control. Let's just put a value 500. So, now I have no violations. But if I was to constrain, coincide, constrained. The root already went into violation, branches are not allowed, okay? So let's undo that for a second. So one way to um, fix this, I mean, the previous way that I was doing this was to use coincide between the node and the free segment and then put a dimension, any dimension really. Um, and that's a way of doing branches, but the um, I will undo for a second. The problem with these, just as with a construction line, because you can right click and draw a construction line, and then collinear here, perpendicular maybe, it already exists, coincide the nodes here, and then dimension this. So the problem with this, sometimes you can move these, Let's try a different place. Oh, let's dimension it. Let's put uh, 350. Because more than one solution exists, so uh, the free segment can jump on the other side. Let's go 150. Uh, and let's do perpendicular here, for example. So this is not fully constrained, um, but even if I was to perpendicular here, turn these off, um, because it can be 150 in the other direction, on the other side of the node, sometimes this will jump. So, for example, if I was to change this to driven um, and change it back, 150 is also on the other side. There is no negative, positive side. So at some point, um, when you when you move these, when you drag them, the root will jump on the other side of the of the line because it's 150 on the other side as well. So it's not a perfect solution. What's a better way of doing branches? So instead of using coincident constraint, sorry, 350. Let's just go 350. In between the nodes, which will go into root violation, we'll go node with a line and then node with a line again. And this will simulate a coincident constraint between the nodes, but we, it will not generate an error. Yeah. Step up for a second. 
what you will notice is that in my style I have the T instead of the coupling just as I've shown you last week so let's rotate this 180 Come on. and then we're gonna restore it just so that it updates when I change the size So the problem now is to a cross section that this pipe segment will go and intersect the line. So we'll go with the line. Now when when you have a node like on these two, let's just let's just use this one. On this node, as soon as you place the fitting or the fitting gets placed automatically by inventor, it will trim these two pipes yeah so what we want to do is to be able to trim this pipe as well so we're gonna go inside and we're gonna choose the point remember that any open points any open ends there's a trim extent pipe so you should be able to use trim extend if it's hard to pick because there are three nodes in here, you may want to do the trim before you constrain the free segment in into the existing, into the fixed ones. So we're going to do the same here. We've got another segment. Let's just do the same. 50. Where are my planes? Perpendicular. off and then let's just bring it closer for a second so before I do coincide node with the line I can right click on the end and choose trim extend pipe and in here you can enter a value or you can type a parameter an existing parameter those of you that follow my blog and my videos know that I like to import a set of parameters for every pipe style and size that I use. This being a 2 inch PVCU, I have already imported. Uh, if you go into, I think it's manage, import. I usually type IP, import parameters. So you import the parameters. Um, so I have styles, different styles. And parameters so socket well PVCU if I click that and I import that it'll bring in those parameters and if I change the size of the of the root I come back and I import different parameters and all my dimensions update this will help me in tight confined spaces I do a lot of containers so there's not a lot of room so I just want to make sure that I use every bit of space that I can um, and I have an example here if I step up for a second here I have a T a T a bit of gap in between now I've actually measured I went online um, I created an Excel file and I know how much space an elbow or a T takes so I'm looking at half the distance half the total length and that's why in my case for at least PVC UABS and all that the the, the uh, T takes as much as a 90 degree elbow yeah, it, it needs exactly the same space so if I go inside this dimension is actually elbow which is that elbow plus gap plus elbow um, dimension visited here so it's it is the elbow plus the gap there plus another elbow and so what I've done in this case, I've created another parameter which is called elbow or T engagement distance. So in here, I'm going to right click trim extend pipe. And instead of putting a value, I'm going to type EE, which is the elbow uh, T engagement distance. And this helps me if I change the size and I import new parameters, this will, will, will change as well. And then you can use the coincide here and then this note there I have no errors I don't have any problems 
and it's all fixed and I can guarantee that this will not flip on the other side. Well, um, it'll probably, maybe if it'll flip, it'll flip 350, so you need to pull down 700 millimeters to be able to, to drag it on the other side, while in this case, you only need to drag it engagement distance, you know, this 50 mil. So you can drag it down. For some reason, it's working perfectly now. So, um, <laughs> but I had it, and if you look in the, the, the tube and pipe um, on the ADS station, on the overhaul, there's a post there. Let me just find. And here it is. It's 14 stop routes from jumping while dragging nodes. You see that engagement uh, there. Oh, that one, for that matter. As soon as you pulled it, it, it just goes all over. So I got a nice space there, but as soon as I drag it, it jumps on the other side. Yeah, so this way at least, <laughs> you get in vain, in better angles. So at least um, in this case, it's fixed. It's, it's not it's not floating, it's not gonna jump on the other side. It might, but it might, you may need to drag it 700 millimeters to be able to uh, create a possible solution on the on the other side of the of the fixed line. Now let's finish the route and see what a cross section looks like. So cross section again, and this is perfect. That's exactly what we want. I've got no errors. I've got no problems. Um, I've tested this as much as I could. I even used it a couple of times in working environment, and it seems to be working good till now. Uh, I didn't got any problems. Um, sometimes when I use a gap or a bit of a distance like I've used there, um, the first time you populate the route, it complains about root self-intersecting. So although I don't really recommend this because it goes against uh, my principle of not populating the route until the very end, at least, and this is good especially for large assemblies but what you could do you go inside the route finish my cross section before you draw anything you just put a a, a bit a bit of root just just leave one up in the air like that or the one that i had there yeah you just leave one up in the air and you come out and you populate the route and then as soon as you go back, you start drawing your regular sketch and I can guarantee you that it would not complain. It only complains about roots self-intersecting um, when you first populate the rune. So if, you, if you've already populated the rune, then it will not complain about intersecting it. You can intersect it as much as you can. Right, so I found it. It is number 37. Not sure if you can see there. Here we go. I got a small gap there, and as soon as I try and finish the route, I uh, eat complaining about the route self intersecting. So, uh, what I do then is go inside the route and increase the gap, come up, let, let it populate, and then go back and change the dimension to that small gap that I had there. So, it is working. So, as soon as, as, soon as it populates the route, it will not complain about. Uh, self-intersecting uh, that's all you have to do um, so in our case I would just draw a line up in the air populate the route then go back delete that line and do your normal sketching as you would and this should in fact uh, help you solve all the problems that you have and this is it um, I hope you've learned something new something interesting I hope you use this and you'll report back and see how that goes till next time bye bye